Moving on, our next question is from Sherry in Reno, and she is curious about Bank of America, ticker symbol BAC. I feel like this is one that we haven't really covered much. Yeah. Uh, the In addition to airlines, uh, another sector of boring stocks that you should be thinking about selling premium again is the financial sectors. Now, a lot of the financial companies are expensive, like Goldman Sachs is one we featured a couple days, a couple of shows ago. But Bank of America is in that price range where a lot of us can afford it. Uh, again, I bring it back to the, if we're going to do any sort of option trading against it, we have to do everything in lots of 100. So the minimum purchase here, instead of being $24,000, is going to be $4,000. So uh, 4,300, 4,400. So it's more affordable for us with smaller portfolios. Same thing that we saw with United Airlines, where I was just about ready to write uh, Bank of America off. It's back now in the channel, giving us a buying opportunity. Uh, and so I agree. This was Sherry, I think, from Reno. Sherry, I think that you've identified a good symbol that is trending sideways that would be worthwhile to go long on, or you can wait, and when it tops out, you can go short on it. Um, again, if I'm going long because it's a neutral position, I'm going to start collecting those incomes on it, I can be happy to know that the dividend would work in my behalf every three months. If I go short on this symbol, realize that that's a pretty healthy dividend that Bank of America gives, and that's something that's going to negatively affect your account. So if you're thinking of going short, why not instead use a substitute option? The substitute option uh, is not going to be affected by dividends, either in the call or the put side. So something to think about. One of the things we like to do, SIP, is... On our trade, we try to see if we can get everything firing in our direction. So we like to uh, evaluate how dividends are going to be affecting us. And if they're going to affect us pos positively, we'll do the trade one way. If they're going to affect us negatively, we'll do the trade another way so that we can you know, take care of that. Same thing with trend direction like we were talking about with Wendy's. If there is a trend direction, we want that back month or that you know initial position, that covering position to be able to be set up in a way that in the long term, it's going to profit us. And we like uh, knocked it out of the, the ballpark on Wendy's. And then we also like to think about things like the time decay and the uh, three to six months out to reverse time decay. So if you're selling an option, you want time decay to work for you. If you're buying an option, you don't want the time decay to be in effect because it's going to work against you. So we kind of make sure that everything is working for us. One of the noob or newbie mistakes that I've noticed is that some people will um, get into a trade and they'll have a few of the variables working against us, getting against them that they didn't evaluate. And so they're like, well, you know, this one variable that I based this whole trade on is working for me, but my option position is working against me. What's up? And the answer is, is you didn't really evaluate all the different aspects of what you're doing. And there's ways through option selection to pick the right option. So in my case for Sherry, I'd either buy 100 shares of this stock or lots of 100 of this stock, or I would consider an option. Let's look at the options and let's pick an option that we would use as a substitute. I have a quick question so, on this one, AJ. What with with the interest yeah. rate with the forecasted interest rate hikes, how does that play into the financials and the banks? Hmm. That could uh so uh, the banks make very similar to the oil companies, right? The oil companies make a, uh, a certain percentage of profit above and beyond the price of oil, right? And so when the price of oil is higher, their profit, even if they don't change that profit margin, the profit, because it's a percentage, is higher. And so the oil companies do better. 
Same thing with banks. They have a certain amount of profit margin that they put on their transactions. So great. What's neat is, is when the Fed raises the interest rate, their profit margin is now, it's like raising the price of oil. They're raising the price of money. And so we should see that banks do better. Um, they've got a lot more. So since the banks have been operating in this like zero interest rate world for so long, the banks have figured out other ways to get money. Um, and so I'm not sure that they're as tied as they once were to making money on interest. Uh, they've got other like ways that they've been bringing in income. But I bet you they'll, they'd go back. Like I think we'll we'll probably see more loan originations at these higher interest rates, and that could affect uh, the banks. But I think that's going to be a lagging thing. So even if the Fed spends all 2022 raising interest rates to like two and a half percent, I think is where they've targeted it so far. Um, I, I'm not sure that's going to affect the bottom. Uh, in other words, I think that our banks will probably still be going sideways. The interest rates have to get up like at 4% or something for us to actually see the earnings of banks um, start to be higher and see more interest. In other words, not have our banks be boring stocks anymore. Right. That's a great question, though. But let's look at a, a back month option. Now, I, I want an option that's going to pretty much be trading similar to the underlying symbols. So that means going deep in the money. So I might look at an option out. Uh, this is the leap that's going to be expiring in January of 2023. And I might want to pick an option. Uh, the mark price is the price at which we think that a transaction would go through. It's halfway between bid and ask. And so what I want to do is I want to understand um, approximately how much of the value of the option that would be at expiration is part of that price. And so that's simply a little bit of a division uh, equation. And this is, by the way, for you Greek followers, this is their way to do it, in my opinion, than following um, delta. Some people will say, just buy a delta over 90. I think this is a little bit more accurate. So all I'm going to do is take this intrinsic price and divide it by the mark price. And I want it to be 95% or higher. So in this case, $20.80 divided by $21.05. And so this is 98%. So this is a good option. I could probably even get one cheaper if I was to look at this one here, 1880 divided by 1940. 1880 divided by 1940. That one's still above 95%. So I could use this $25 strike price option. Instead of paying $43 uh, a share, I could paying $19 a share, so less than half. And this thing is going to basically behave exactly like the stock. In other words, if the stock goes up a dollar, this option is going to go up a dollar. And so I would probably think about Using that option. Now, because I've got such a link between this option and the underlying sold price, I've gone so, so deep in the money, you might be asking, why do I have to go out that far in time? Why do I have to go all the way out to January 20th? It's because you want to have as many months as possible to sell that premium, make that income off of that back month option before it expires. If you make yourself a nice money machine that every month you're able to collect premiums by selling the premium and rolling out the option, you should take it as many times as you can before the back month option expires. Stocks don't expire, so you do it as many times as you want on the stock. The back month option does expire, so why not give yourself some time? I usually tell my program participants to at least go out eight months, have the ability to at least do eight. Uh, income needs on this before it disappears through expiration.